Welcome everyone to another video and you would have seen my smartwatch in my previous videos and uh, I haven't really done a whole lot of content on it uh, because I was expecting it to more uh, be more of an accessory and something that stable something that that lasts kind of um, for a long time and I don't really have to tinker too much with it but um, like every other Android device that cannot happen first of all because I like tinkering with them and the other thing is that most of the times the software support is completely crap so uh, we were expecting Android Oreo to hit the Zen Watch 3 the Asus Zen Watch 3 uh, pretty soon but uh, it we found out that um, Asus had actually closed down their smartwatch department so there was no support incoming uh, for this watch so I said what the heck and let's go ahead and mess around with it so right now it is running the stock Android uh, Nougat uh, based uh, Android Wear 2.8 and as you can see it is a fairly laggy uh, piece of hardware um, consider yourself lucky if you can go a day without any sort of lag so there are some notifications here and then uh, if I move on to the uh, app drawer sometimes it's smooth sometimes it just lags like hell and so do the apps um, and there are not a whole lot so I can as you can see a basic ADA 64 application takes a whole while to uh, start although it does have a quad core uh, 1 gigahertz CPU which I honestly think should be way more than enough to uh, get some basic small Android Wear styled apps to run smoothly but it doesn't and um, yeah, uh, I think it's probably because of the fairly um, high uh, high level of um, CPU power saving that goes into it just to keep the battery from draining. Um, so in the systems we have about 512 megs of RAM if I remember correctly. So installed RAM is 512, available is 440, rested for the GPU. Um, and the actual available memory is uh, just 150 megabytes which is absolutely fine because it doesn't really uh, need a whole lot uh, to work with those uh, tiny little apps that are there but um, again the way Android Wear is at least for this particular version is not that good so uh, uh, enough about that let's go ahead and run something called the uh, Asteroid OS now this is a Linux based OS um, and uh, and it's actually Linux GNU it is not an AOSP ROM uh, so the first so the good thing about uh, Asteroid OS is you can see all the details on the screen right now but the good good, good thing is you can actually live boot it um, in a way so what you do is you have the um, system image file in the watch itself so you download it using the adb push command to the internal memory of the watch and then what you go ahead and do is um, you use the uh, fast boot boot command to uh, actually just live boot the um, boot image so that means your device tree your um, uh, root uh, device and then your kernel itself gets live booted uh, from directly from the RAM so that's pretty nice so I've already gone ahead and uh, copied the uh, system image and uh, let's reboot it to fastboot uh, and that should be done in a second so there it is it's shut down and now it's rebooting to fastboot and you can see I have the fast boot mode on uh, and the next step what we need to do is to go ahead and um, boot with the kernel uh, with the boot image and uh, it's done so you can see just in a few seconds the watch would actually boot into Asteroid OS so Asteroid OS is a lot similar to Tizen in the way that it still uses the open embedded and uh, Yocto based bit big system to uh, build itself apart from that I really haven't looked uh, deep enough but there are a few smartwatch supported 
so I think we have booted into uh, Asteroid OS so let's go through the whole boot uh, for all the, the whole setup process it's actually pretty interesting and then uh, we'll talk a bit more about Asteroid OS um, on its own so uh, language English is just fine time I think it is uh, telling the wrong time right now so it's 1.56 a.m. and it's the 28th of January if I remember correctly um, and yeah welcome to Asteroid OS uh, and then let's uh, move forward so all of the control on the Asteroid OS is basically based on edges so uh, you swipe uh, and that's how you navigate through the watch there's no hardware buttons or anything else and this uh, demo that it's going through right now is actually very intuitive uh, and runs you a whole lot through what needs what needs to be done so there's the agenda calculator alarm clock there are some there are some keywords with asteroid os as of now uh, we'll talk about just in a second after we have completed the um, demo so there we are enjoy your asteroid wear watch so right off the bat what i think is it's extremely extremely fast it's not laggy at all you you can navigate very quickly um sometimes it's a bit too quick um but yes it is very smooth very uh, animations are pretty quick again it's lightweight it's not based on, on Android uh, so you have some pre-installed apps calculator alarm clock stopwatch timer and weather now if we go into any of the apps that, uh, that are mostly inbuilt don't require any separate network or Bluetooth connection they should work fine uh, but with the calculator app you can see it's not really um, design for the circular screen so a couple of initial digits get missed and that really doesn't work and the uh, e the equal to sign is actually cut off right there so there are some issues uh, like this all around um, so what do we go do to exit this oh, that locks it all right there we go um but if we go into an app say agenda uh we we don't have any events right here and that's because uh either you can add your own event uh, again uh when the keyboard comes up it's not really oh so we do have again i'm not really going uh, too much into the watch itself so um i wasn't aware that I uh, it actually had um, handwriting re recognition so that is pretty good so day two day z I, I wanted to write two it's writing z but um, whatever uh, it sort of works and not too um, good but there are more problems right now than her handwriting recognition specifically for the Asus Zen Watch 3 and that is that the sensors, the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth don't really work at all. So what you're limited to is a very static operating system for your watch which makes it look fancy um, but it doesn't really have all the smartwatch feature working. So uh, you will never get notifications, you cannot update weather because it's not synced simply because um, it doesn't have Bluetooth so if I go on to the Bluetooth area and just say it's not connected it's off you can't turn it on or anything like that um, uh, and that's actually about it that's more or less uh, the issue right now for me why I can't stick I would happily stick to an OS like this over Android Wear at the moment seeing where Android Wear is going especially for this particular smartwatch which is pretty much nowhere but um, yeah, I, I really hope that uh, someday um, the devs can get Android, uh, the devs can get Asteroid OS 
working properly on the Zen Watch 3. There are a couple watches where things do work just fine and you can find them on their website which I'll of course link down in the description. So more moral of the story is that it has a nice live wallpaper so if you uh, take a close look at it it's actually moving uh, in the background the uh, edges move around and give uh, this um, very subtle animation uh, on the background but apart from that it's uh, not much use to me because the peripheral because the connectivity part isn't really working so that was it um, and the best part about uh, the the way the Astro can live boot is I can actually uh, go ahead and simply reboot the watch and what I am left with is my old AOSP or Android Wear installation so that's it, it it's gone into a uh, power saving and then uh, so it's switched off now and what we can do is power it back on and that's because I have the bootloader unlocked so it gives me this kind of a warning and there we go we are back into Android Wear so let's take a few seconds it should take a few seconds to boot up and once that is done uh, we are pretty much back to my previous installation I can go ahead and use Android Wear apps and Android Wear itself as I was doing before um, so yes that's about it for Asteroid OS sadly it didn't really work out for me but if you have one of the watches that they do support or if you don't really mind the um, the hardware support that's not available yet then you can actually go ahead and try it out I'd actually recommend that over Android Wear again I'm not really too sure about the security and all of that kind of details about Asteroid OS I've heard that Tizen itself is not very secure and that's made by Samsung which is a pretty big tech giant company but uh, sometimes um, or most of the times individually developed software can be uh, better and more secure so yes that was it for Android Wear and again I'm back with the crazy laggy uh, Android Wear OS um, yeah so your frames are not dropping your browser is streaming just fine it's just Android Wear and the way it is so I hope in sometime in the future I do get a decent operating system for this thing but till then, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.